Facebook. Uh, Tuesday night, KHOP 88 is on the air. Are, uh, are we ready to wing it? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, am I supposed to answer uh, that or she has no? Yeah, well, either way. So joining us is Wendy White McDougall. And one of the pieces of business that we usually get under get out of the way is where you're from. So I can say joining us from fill in the blank is Wendy White McDougal. So you'll just have to tell us in real time. Wendy, where are you right now? I am in Blaine, Minnesota. The promised land. Beautiful. Love it. So you, okay. I don't want to fill in everybody on what we talked about, but we did talk about theater because Wendy and I were in a play together in high school and we both have done just a very little theater after high school. Um, but the movie Waiting for Guffman is about a town named Blaine. They produced a play <laughs> called Red, White, and Blaine. I have to watch that. I have not seen that. It's a must see, I think. So, <laughs> so thank you for joining us, Wendy. And um, thank you as for is, me. it's always the case where we ask our guests. How did you get from Hopkins High School to Blaine? What are, pick out some high points, the Cliffs notes. What, uh, what has happened in your life in the last 30 some years? Um, so I got a Bachelor of Science degree from University of Minnesota. And then I got a master's degree in plant pathology from University of Minnesota. And I uh, met my lovely husband there and we got married and um, Worked for a chemical company and the uh, U Extension Service for a while. Ended up at oh, wow. Minnesota, Minnesota Department of Agriculture. And then um, I had my first baby and I almost died. So I stayed home after that and then had four more. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had, yeah, I had help syndrome with the first one. And what is that? Um, it's hemolysis, elevated liver enzymes, and low platelets. So it was kind of, it was a little scary there for a while. It was um, like the step up from preeclampsia. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, scary. But I love kids, so I have more. So, um, and, oh, and then, um, yeah. So then um, I've just been, we live in St. Paul for 20 some years and or almost 20 years and then moved to Blaine. Okay, well, that is a really good introduction on this very daunting question that Jason likes to ask. Why is Blaine, you say Blaine the promised land? I've never been to Blaine. What's it like there? Oh, um, there's a lot of open space. We're just north of a big golf course. And um, I always kind of laugh because there's an area they call the, the lakes. But, you know, I grew up in Minnetonka by the lake. So, but there's a lot of, there's water and green and trees and it's quiet. And um, it's kind of a newer suburb. So, you know, like the, the stores are new and the roads are newer. And it's just, mm -hmm. it's a nice place to be. How, okay, five kids, ages, yeah. um, you can share names if you'd like or not, um, but how many? I, yeah, what are what? Where do they all line up on the age spectrum? So I have a nineteen-year-old, and my daughter will be eighteen pretty soon, and in December. I have a thirteen-year-old, a nine-year-old, and a six-year-old. And that baby at forty-five, that was a little rough, but <laughs> yeah, that is that's, yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, surprise. <laughs> um, Wendy, so when my stepkids came to live with me, I went from one to three children in the household. Oh. And someone said that's a big jump. Yeah. Is it a big jump from three to five? Or Not do you really. get systems down? It seemed like one to two, and maybe two to three was a jump, but after that, it's like eh, one more. Okay. Whatever. So, and the older ones, um, the older ones really help take care of the little ones. Mm -hmm. So actually, it, it's the last two have been really fun because mm -hmm. someone else has changed diapers and <laughs> my dog <daughter> trained no <laughs> men. <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. I was also really sick for a while. I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease um, a couple of years ago. So I had some some downtime there where the kids really had to step up and, you know, take care of each other. And, yeah. 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 
That's great. Um, so it's a team sport there, raising the kids in, in the house. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, it takes many. To, to, to those last two little boys, yeah, it takes all of us. <laughs> was it a, um, what was the scene like in your house during COVID? Um, was that a big uh, step for you to take to adapt to everyone being around all the time or wasn't it too bad? No, we've always homeschooled. So okay. it was, kind of, it was, it was kind of life as usual. And uh, except for um, we do belong to a co-op that we couldn't meet with our, the other 35 families. So we just met at um, in little groups, the same group uh -huh. meeting and then did our meetings on Zoom and it worked out great. Well, that's but, really uh, interesting. You're, you're the first person we've interviewed who has shared that they've done homeschooling, which I think is really interesting. Was there a reason why you decided to do that that you'd want to share? Well, we lived in St. Paul and um, I mean, it was a nice area, but the schools were kind of, uh, and um, my older sister, she has eight kids. She had always homeschooled them. And uh, and I just, I just kind of always admired how nice they were, how much, you know, I enjoyed being around them and they could talk to adults and be nice to other kids. And it was just, I, thought, I, I want my kids to be like that. And so I looked into it more and I, yeah, I, I think I can do that. And it and it did kind of get to the point where it was like, well, we're either going to have to work and maybe pay to send them to private school or just stay home and homeschool them. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's, so that's kind of how we ended up. Hmm. So that's interesting. Good. Yeah, really good. Really um, I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. So this co the co-op, <laughs> is the co-op a, is that a homeschooling co-op you're participating in this with other families? Yeah, so there is, I think maybe we have 37 families now. So there's um, lots of kids. We meet every other week for three hours and then we hire a science teacher and we hire a gym teacher and then rotate a third class. So they, um, so they have a group of peers and some younger friends and some older friends. And um, the moms can stay sane and um, just really help each other out. Like we've had, you know, different families have, go through COVID now, um, the illness, you know, so you'll get 20 people show up with, with a meal for you, that kind of thing. Oh, so just, yeah. you know, someone needs to move, we're just all there. So kind of like a big 37, fam 37 family family. Uh -huh. so, yeah, it's been really good. Yeah, interesting. So um, you mentioned many animals, like you didn't put a number on it. You put a number on the children, but not on the animals. I Is that because you number. don't know the number of animals? <laughs> um, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so we breed lizards. And so sometimes actually, you know, they'll have babies and they'll, anyway. And then we'll, my, my daughter and I sell them at shows. Mm -hmm. Okay. So sometimes I, I don't. And, and I don't really say in public how many there are. But I brought one. Let's see. see yes. One? Okay, I brought friends. So I'm channeling my um, inner. No, now I forgot her name. What was her name? From the Tonight Show. Joan oh, Embry. Oh, Joan Embry. Yeah. Yeah, my inner Joan Embry. So we raise um, crested geckos. Oh, wow. Uh, wow. Geckos and um, gargoyle geckos and a few other species. I have uh, one really rare species, so that's fun. And then some other ones. He's so cute. And then they have a oh. big fun. Um, that oh. gecko is very photogenic. Yeah. Isn't he pretty? So this is one that... Um, that I bred. And, so. Wow. Okay. So is that lizard, is that gecko green? Like what are the He's colors? White. He's black and white. Oh, black and white. It's so funny. It looks a little green on my screen. Mm -hmm. So I brought another one. You want to see another one? Oh yeah. No, this is amazing. So these we probably won't breed because, um, they do take up a lot. Um, 
Nobody ever pooped on Joan Embry on Johnny Carson, so I'm hoping. The, they just decided to, oh my gosh. They, they edited that out. So this is a blue tongue skank. Can you see his blue tongue? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, so he's so pretty. He's really extra pretty one. That's a skink? Yeah, so these um, originated from Australia. Can't import anything anymore, but um, many generations back, his relatives came from Australia. But they're just, wow. they're such a nice lizard. So cool. So what anyway. Makes, what makes a lizard, that lizard, nice? He's just a sweetheart. He just, you know, he doesn't mind to be handled and... Um, I take, I've taken him to our co-ops, um, kind of project night and oh. the kids can hold him. There's a little neighbor girl who comes over all the time and she holds him and anyone can hold him. My mom, this is my mom's favorite lizard too. My mom holds him. Okay. Is it slimy? It kind of looks sleek. Yeah. He's very, he's, yeah, smooth like a snake. Look at my, <laughs> okay. All right. So how did you. How did this come about? How did you get involved in this pursuit, Wendy? Um, so when I was in college, I worked in a pet shop, so I was exposed to a lot of different species. And um, so I always really loved reptiles. And my daughter wanted a reptile, so you know we went and got the bearded dragon at a reptile shop. And so then I had to go back there every week for insects, right? And then so just over time, I became friends with the owner, too. And so, you know... I come in, he let me hold stuff, and then I end up taking more home. And um, the crested geckos have really interesting, they're polygenetic, so they're very interesting to breed. And, you know, if you know their, their lines, you know, try, fun to try to predict what's going to come out. And they sell really, really well. They're kind of a, I don't know if you want to say trendy, but um, easy to sell lizards. So my daughter and I have a lot of fun at the shows together. So and are, November 22nd is the next one if you're in Minnesota. Yes. So Mark, so. and is it a lizard show? Like what is this show? Tell us more. Oh, actually it's a reptile expo. So it's okay. a cold-blooded expo. Super fun. Lots of different reptiles and um, arachnids and isopods and frogs. Super fun. So yeah, that's amazing. So how many, like, what, where is the show, where is the show on November 22nd? And like, how big is it? How many vendors are there and how many people come? So it's at the um, Bloomington Doubletree and it's the Cold-Blooded Expo. And um, I think, I think their highest attendance was maybe 4,500, something like that. Sure. And um, I'm not sure how many vendors we have now. There's there's a lot. Yeah. So it's super fun for the family to go there. And we used to let people hold animals, but with COVID, we can't really hold stuff anymore. But can yeah. the lizards get COVID? I don't know, but I kind of don't like the idea of I don't know possibly germy hands touching them, and then you know I can't wash them and. I, I just read, I heard on the radio this morning that a bunch of lions got COVID. That's why I asked. No. So sad. Yeah. I, I heard that about um, apes, too, at one of the zoos. Mm. And so, then, um, well, this is, it's just so interesting. Okay, so does your lizard, do you have a business name or do you go as yourself or like some pseudonym? Yeah, so we are singing scales, reptiles, and jewelry, because I also make jewelry, so. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, I never did get around to making a face page, Facebook face page, Facebook page, but. but. Yeah, word, Mark Zuckerberg is not doing so well these days, so. Yeah. <laughs> word of mouth is powerful too, Wendy. Um, okay, so do you have any other types of animals at your house? I do. We have three dogs, two guinea pigs, and a frog. Um, I, had, I sold frogs for a while, but frogs are not my thing. It's fine. And birds, um, my bird lays eggs like crazy, but they're, they're too, 
I don't know, intelligent. I can't sell them. They would be, I don't know. They get really attached. And I have my favorite one here. If he'll come up. Oh. Come here, baby. So come here, babes. I'm in my daughter's room, so he's not used to this room. But so oh. this is uh oh. so this little guy, um he's so pretty. That's so beautiful. pretty. Yeah. So he um he I gave my my birds laid eggs in a nest box. And um, so then I had three, three birds and I don't want any more birds, so I didn't give her a next box the next year. I just gave her a plastic plate. And she laid eggs on it, and rock star that she is, she hatched one. And I didn't know it. My son said, Oh, there's something under the grate, because they have a grate on the bottom of their the cage. And I thought it was a moth, and I pulled it out, and it was a fresh chick. And I was like, mm. oh. I don't want any more birds, you know. And so I tried putting him back with the parents, but then they wouldn't have him back. So I had to hand raise him. And uh, so it was every two hours for I don't know, a couple months, and then taper off. So so he's very attached to me. And yeah. what is his name? Uh, very creatively named Baby Bird. <laughs> Baby Bird. I know. So like Oh, that's funny. Now I I'm going into the animal world since you brought us here. That bird looks much more like, well, from the video, like engaged in you and the world. Are the lizards that engaged in their own way? Do you know what I mean? If they're hungry, the bigger okay. ones. Um, we also have bearded dragons. I don't breed those, but we have those for pets. Um, and he'll fly around for a while and land wherever. Um, so when they're hungry, they will, they'll try to get my attention and they'll get excited if I come over there, um, right. the smaller ones don't, but the skinks will, they'll pot the glass, like, I'm starving in here, let me out, and, um, and I think this one, I think Honey likes to be, actually likes to be out and held, so he's, um, I had a really bad experience with the bearded dragon, which I kind of want to share with you, Wendy. I mean, if not now, when? I thought I was going to be such a good stepmom when my stepson moved in and started kindergarten. I'm like, let's bring home the bearded dragon from the kindergarten class for Labor Day weekend, first weekend of school. And we followed the directions. And within an hour, the kids are like, hmm. The dragon's white and not moving, and the dragon died within an hour of coming home. Now, Preston was oh. cool. The teacher was all right. They had their talk about death, but then people started stopping me on the street. <laughs> and I heard what happened to Spike at your house. And I'm like, how did you know? And they're like, well, he was my kindergarten pet, too. And they ended up dedicating the yearbook to him. Oh, a very beloved bearded dragon. Wow, that's that's awful. It is awful. I don't know what to say, except yeah, that would be traumatizing. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll Did go back to you. Yeah, why would he die within an hour? Well, I think I think he was so old. I mean, I I oh, you, just his breath. Yeah, I think so. change of scenery. Did it. he was yeah? Did I'm you? So sorry, everyone. Did you have exotic animals in your house growing up, Wendy? Yeah, birds, and I had an iguana, and I had um, we had guinea pigs, and I had a rabbit, and a snake, and yeah, all those yeah. fun things. You go back in there. I know you're getting a little nervous. Um, like being okay. So this is going through your life. Animals oh. have been a part of your life. Yeah, always. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, starting in nursery school, they had a, a gerbil, and I loved the gerbil, and I thought, I am going to look deep in his eyes, and are, you know, like, we're going to connect our souls, whatever, so, so I was holding him like this, and he grabbed on to the tip of my nose, and wouldn't come off, <laughs> And so my memory from that is of them taking me down the hall in, in nursery school or kindergarten, wherever it was, 
um, with the whole school following along behind and the gerbil is hanging off my face. So, I remember, so some of it I'm, I, I don't remember at all, but I do remember like the nurse trying to pull it off. And I think she had to put alcohol in his mouth or something. Um, but yeah, my what? other early, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. So my other memory of um, uh, animal experiences, I was in this one, I think I was in preschool or, you know, when you're super little Yeah. and the classroom hamster got loose. I shouldn't even say this in public or on camera. It's horrible. So the class hamster got loose and I thought, I am going to be the one to find the hamster. I'm going to be the hero. So I found the hamster, you know, it's on the floor like this. And so I kneeled down to pick it up and I kneeled right on it, oh. right on it and killed it like right there in front of me. In preschool, in nursery school. Pre yeah. Yeah. So, so okay. I went, I kind of sad. Oh, horrible. So I, I didn't have the best start with animals, but okay. Yeah. So we're going to go to high school. Uh, I really love all these animal stories. Actually, Susan Orleans just released a new book on essays about animals. Oh, I should read that. Yeah, I'll send you the link. But anyhow, so Wendy, did this love, do you ever bring any of your animals to Hopkins High? No. Now well, I heard. I asked, did you, were, were there, were there any incidents where kids from school visited you at your home growing up and interesting things ensued there? Like, where they show up at your house and were surprised at the fact that you had these exotic pets? Uh, maybe with the snake. Yeah. Maybe. And I had rats and my nephew was over and he let them all out one day. I used to breed rats when I worked for the pet shop. Mm -hmm. And so he did release all my rats. But other than that. <laughs> now, Wendy, did you ever know or hear the story that there was a pig let loose at Hopkins High when we were students there? A kind of. pig? Did that really happen? I don't know. I was going to ask him you. <laughs> no, I, I didn't see it. And I didn't do it. So. Fair enough. I just wanted to ask. It's one of the things that I'm learning about is this, the myth of the greased pig. Yeah. No, I didn't see. Okay. I know nothing. Yeah. Um, well, this is fascinating. I Yeah. I mean, I thought we would talk about theater the whole time, but no way. That's way no. less. Yeah. No, oh. that's way less cool. Um, tell us what... Um, uh, we the question we ask everybody all the time is what um, if you have any teachers that you remember or that stuck with you over time um, expand that to anything else is there anything from school that um, that stuck with you um I cannot remember his name but Brad Jones and I mm -hmm. for some reason we would fight all the time in class get in arguments or whatever and this teacher bought tickets to some big concert that was in town and and said Brad and I could go together. This is in high school? Yeah. I I don't know. So weird. Um and then I think he took the tickets. I didn't get to go. He didn't like call me and say, hey, I have the tickets. Let's go. But it was they were like good tickets to something and I don't remember what they were, but I thought, I thought that was, looking back, I'm like, that's weird, but <laughs> that yeah. is an, That's an interesting memory. Well, Brad Jones has already been a guest. Otherwise we would do a follow-up question. Right. <laughs> I don't know why, and I don't know why we would argue, except we knew each other, you know, we'd known each other since we were kids. So I don't know, it was weird. That is interesting. So. <laughs> cool. Yeah. That's funny, but you don't remember the teacher, you don't remember the class, you just... I feel like it was a social studies class, but I can't remember the guy's name. Mm -hmm. No worries. Funny. Um, what with all this uh, uh, keeping track of kids and animals in your house, do you have any time for hobbies or, or pastimes uh, outside of that? 
Um, well, I make jewelry and I feed and clean lizards. And that's yeah. <laughs> what okay. kind of jewelry do you make? Um, earrings, which I can't even wear anymore. I literally, I make like thousands of pairs of earrings and I can't wear them anymore because metal bothers them and necklaces and bracelets. So like that. Stuff like oh, that. That's really pretty. Where do you get the, the material, the stones and beads? Um, and there's there's a big wholesale show where there used to be, I haven't gone in a long time, in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. Used to be the old Thunderbird. Um, and then you get people from around the world with just the most fabulous things. Denise mm -hmm. Klosterman also makes yeah. jewelry, who is one of our get guests, mostly yep. out of beads. Do you have an Etsy store? No, I'm just, I'm too busy. I feel like, you know, people would be putting in orders and I'd yeah. forget. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, this kid's got to go to the emergency room and then I got to go to the emergency room. And it's like, well, sorry, I didn't get your stuff sent. And mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Some, well, they're not so little me. Well, so Wendy, we have some people here who want to say hello. Karen Koski Hintermeister says hi, Wendy. Todd Finn says saying hello, y'all from Texas. Oh. And Troy Finn says hi, all from Hopkins. Oh, nice. Hi. That's awesome. Um, I am... Uh... I'm interested in, I've had this discussion <clears throat> with some friends of mine recently because the pandemic is in various stages of whatever, lingering or not lingering. And um, people are discovering that, that, they, that, that activities that they stopped doing, they, they realize that they didn't really miss that much and they're not taking mm. them back up after. Where it's like people, I'm like, are, you know, you think about going to the movies and people are like, I can't imagine going to the movies ever again in my life. Like, I'm not interested, <laughs> in there, you know, or whatever. That's just an example. But um, are there things like that? that are, are there things that you gave up? We talk about things that you picked up during the pandemic. Are there things that you yeah. gave up that you're like eager to get back to, or maybe you're just not so eager to get back to? Not really. Just the, the thing that I really missed the most was to start co op. Um, but otherwise, not really. Yeah. I'm kind yeah. of a homebody and, um, you know, I haven't gone to plays or concerts or that kind of thing since I, a couple kids ago. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm tired. <laughs> I can't understand that. It's interesting. I only have one kid here and, um, I've never been in their high school and I'm like, no, I don't, I don't need to go. Like yeah. the photos are fine. It was just interesting. Like vol I, Jason, when I was listening, I'm like, do I miss volunteering at school? Not so much. <laughs> right. Yeah. Is there something uh, you miss, Jason? Um, that you don't miss that you gave up that you aren't going to do again? Well, yeah. I mean, I guess there were these things that I thought I was really going to be itching to go back to. Um, I like to see live music a lot and. Mm -hmm. Um, if it was, if it was able to just go right, you know, like I think people thought like, well, when the pandemic's over, like someday it's just going to stop and we're all going to go back to normal. But of course that's not the case. So now I'm like doing all this calculation on, you know, uh, do I want to go, do I care enough about going to see some of these bands that I want to go where, to wear a mask and stand there? Yeah. In the nightclub. Oh that's, yeah. I'm not sure about that. Um, we went, my wife and I went to see. Uh, University of Wisconsin has a very good volleyball team. They're second or third in the country or something. We went to, so th for the first time I went to see a, a real indoor sporting event with a mask on the other night. Wasn't that crazy about it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a bizarre so life. You, back to the homeschooling. So do you feel, can you generalize that homeschool homeschooled kids might have been less impacted by the um, pandemic? I mean, that's a weird question, but maybe you know what I'm getting at. Yeah, I think so. And my heart just went out and goes out to all the parents who suddenly had to homeschool their kids because mm -hmm. it's not 
for everybody. And yep. a lot of days it really is there, there is no enjoyment in it. <laughs> and, um, you know, I mean, it's hard. So, um, I was really glad that we were already doing it and not thrown into that. Cause I, I heard from others just how terribly hard that was. And uh, it just, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't any big deal for us really. That's interesting. I'm aware um, though that like as a homeschool parent, the ability to take your kids on field trips is perhaps even more important than it is in a school, in a school, school setting. Did that affect you at all? Were there things that you were just suddenly off the table that you're used to doing with your kids? Yeah, the last couple of years, I've um, been kind of struggling with the Crohn's disease. I'm in remission now. Um, so the last couple of years, yeah, we we really didn't go too many places and we were not doing field trips like mm -hmm. I had with the older children when I was feeling really well. So um, it it really didn't feel very different for us, um, we did miss some of the field trips that we would have gone on anyway. The pumpkin patch, especially my kids were just oh, devastated because yeah. we go to the pumpkin patch every year and that's where you get pumpkins, right? At the, at the patch. Yeah. Um, so that was the biggest, saddest thing. Yeah. But, well, we, I, re I really am glad to hear that your, your health is doing all right. And I appreciate your honesty about what you're going through. I have MS. So I know that um, oh. these things can be really challenging. And mm -hmm. so I'm glad yeah. to hear you're doing all right. Yeah, I give myself a shot every other week and oh, I'm all boy. good, so. Well, that's, yeah. well, is there anything else that when you thought of getting ready for the show that you wanted, any other memories you wanted to share with the world? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Um, yeah, just, you know, just so many good memories this would be hard to choose anyway. Really? Like, what's one? Okay, let's, let's talk about good. Like, what's one good memory? Um, boy, you really put me on the spot there. Okay, the first good memory that you think of. Um, I don't know. Just coming to, I, I enjoyed going to school every day. Yeah, and, me too. Uh, you know, I had a good friend. Sure. And, were you in the, so you and I had classes together in junior high school, which probably meant that you were in, I don't think you were in band, but were you in orchestra or choir? Yeah. Okay. Yep, in orchestra. What did you play and do you still play it? I played the cello and I don't, I don't play it anymore. I saw that back there. Yeah. Um, I played the cello and um, my son played the cello for a long time. So my eldest son, yeah. so that was fun. Yeah, that's, um, you know, we talked to Lance Stasel last week and he talked about all the musical things going mm -hmm. on with his family. See, and when you've got, it seems to me that Wendy, you've got this big family here. <gasps> You're missing out on this opportunity to have a rock <laughs> band or a, or, or a, you know, a, a quintet, you know? Yep, yep. Well, my um, husband plays the bass in a band. Okay. Oh. Uh, so I wish I knew where they were playing this weekend, somewhere in Bloomington, I think. What's uh, the name of their band? Um, <laughs> I have a total brain freeze. It's no um, worries. You can, you I, can put it on the Facebook group. So it's, rec it's called Record High. Um, I couldn't think of it because I was mixing it up with their, his old band. But um, Record High. So they play around town. Cool. Yeah. Blues and oldies and stuff like that. That's so, awesome. yeah. So my husband is musical and my eldest son and my other kids have had piano lessons. And now my two youngest are in a um, introduction to music class. Oh boy. I've had to relearn everything. So yeah. help them practice. Mm, yes. Yeah, that's what is it's harder in the drum and it's just, oh yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> I don't recommend it. But well, I think that music education is really transformative and whatever like dabbling happens is good. Yeah, I think yeah, it has been very good. Yeah. So that's very cool. Well, this is I really have enjoyed our conversation so much. Hey, you guys want to know what's coming up next? Do I? Yes. yes. I was just 
I was just looking to see if I had the, the spreadsheet up. I'm you ready. Up, well, this is episode 72, which is amazing. Jason's like, we, we're hanging out now more than we did in high school. <laughs> Our <laughs> weekly date. Okay, next week, you guys, episode 73, Dan Trockman and Dean Olofsson. Dean Trockman taught at Hopkins High, which I think is amazing. Oh, really? That is. Um, just for a few years, environmental science, I think. November 9th, special correspondent Eric Haugen returns with the baseball team, which is cool. Coming together. Mm hmm No, nope, don't miss it. November 16th, teacher Brad, help me out here, Jason, Norla. Norla. Brad Norla. We'll remind Jason and I everything we missed out on when we were not in the art department. <laughs> November 23rd, Monica Gillen. So cool. November 30th, we're looking for a volunteer. December 7th, Dr. Kim Cappings from the University of Utah. And then December 14th, the band, the band show. It might be even bigger than the baseball team show. They're it coming out of the woodwork. That'll be great. It's going to be um, amazing. Yeah. Well, Wendy, um, it was great to see you again. And you thank you so much for, <laughs> for bringing your friends along. That was really something else. <laughs> um, thank you for letting me do that. Yeah, no, that's for great. Sure. And, You're and, upping yeah. it, Wendy, the drama. I love it. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm going to have to be like, oh, you, <laughs> very cool. Yeah. Good luck at, yes, um, thank you. good luck at your show. And yeah, people, classmates, if you want to say hi to Wendy and buy a lizard, you should get over there to the yeah. double tree. Yep. How, how many lizards Perfect. do you think you'll sell at that thing? Um, we usually sell, um, well, maybe around 50. Wow. That's fantastic. Huh, who knew? Okay. I know. <laughs> this is I've, I've awesome. learned a lot. Definitely. Uh, okay, so Dan Trockman and Dean Olofsson next week. I'll be here. I'll be here too. Thanks, Wendy. Thanks, Wendy. Thank you so much. I love your guests. Take care. Bye. Good night, everybody. Bye.